So you pick some final state, just call it f, and say in time capital T. Okay, so that's a, a well-defined question. Okay, well, let's, let's leave that there. We don't need this anymore. Okay, so how do we write that? So, so basically we want to write that amplitude, A, So what happens? Our initial state, which is I, so evolves and evolves according to the, the Hamiltonian. So the state turns into after time t. You take an exponential minus I over h bar Hamiltonian times the time t. So that's what the state becomes after this time t. Okay, so is this is everyone familiar with, with that? Who's is everyone happy? Yeah? Some people are not. So this is equivalent, if you do it in terms of wave functions, this is equivalent to integrating Schrodinger's equation. So you start with a wave function which describes the state at time zero, and then it's you have a Schrodinger equation is a differential equation, you integrate that and it gives you uh, the state at some later time t. So this is basically just the integrated version. So if you like, actually, I could sort of briefly, perhaps it's useful to briefly remind people. So if you have a state psi, so this is called a ket or a ket vector. So the wave, the wave function psi of x is defined in, in this way. And what this means, this here, so It's an inner product of this position eigenstates. An inner product or overlap, uh, whatever you want to call this, um, position eigenstate x with psi. So what, what does that mean? Well, basically, it means you pick out, uh, if you think of this thing as, as a vector, what you're doing is you're picking out uh, a particular component of a vector. So the analogy, if you want the simplest analogy, just think of vectors in, in two dimensions. Then these, these states like this go, correspond to vectors. And the inner product is just the dot product of vectors. So if you like, when you take an inner product, you're basically picking out the component of one vector along the direction of another vector. So what you're doing here, you're taking some arbitrary vector psi, and you're picking out its component along the direction of this vector, x. And x being a position eigenstate means x is something with a definite position, which we called x here. So basically what you're doing is you're picking out the component uh, of the state at a definite position x. And that's what the wave function gives you. It gives you, well, the, the square of the wave function gives you the probability of finding the particle at position x. So that's essentially what, what this is. So, as I say, there's some, a little more detail in, in some notes that I can give out uh, for, for those of you who need it afterwards. But that's the basic idea. Okay, and, well, time evolution then, which I guess we also need. So what I'm said over on the board on the left is psi then at time t is 
is this exponential of the Hamiltonian acting on the state at time zero. So that's just basically what I've said that state evolves into over there, using a little t here. And you see, if you just differentiate that, so Wanted to just so meant to just be sketching it. Okay, let me just write how that varies, and then you can see basically if I differentiate this respect to t, I just bring down a factor of minus i over h bar times the Hamiltonian h. So if I put a factor of i h bar over here cancels this bit that I bring down, and so I just get the Hamiltonian. And, and that is essentially Schrodinger's equation. So if you like, this is p squared over 2m. Okay, so basically what you do is to to go between the two, the state psi can be transformed into the wave function. Uh, the operator x just becomes multiplication by the coordinate x. And this p here, this operator for the momentum, becomes minus i h bar d by dx. And if you do that, then this is just the Schrodinger equation for the system evolving with time. OK, so that's just a quick sketch of that. OK, so what happens here? Well, we start with this initial state. And it evolves with time. This is the operator that takes it forward in time. So that's the initial state now after a time t. And the amplitude that we want to calculate is the amplitude for it becoming a final state f. And in other words, that's the uh, overlap of this state with the state f, the final state f. So if you like, this state, we could write it out um, as, as a sum. Thinking of this as some sort of vector I thought of that as a vector. Some operator like this is like a rotation of the vector, and then ask what's the component of that new thing along some other vector. So this is the way to imagine this thing. The simplest way, these are vectors. These are like rotations. And then the inner product is just taking a dot product. So pick out a component of one vector along the direction of another one. So this, we just take the inner product with that state f. So that's the amplitude that we want to calculate. OK, so one final thing that we need then, which will actually come up a lot, is something called spectral representation. Although in this special case, I'm going to use it. I'm just going to use it for the identity operator. So you might know it other, under other names, such as inserting a complete set of states uh, something like that. So it says the identity operator is a sum over all states. So if we do it for uh, OK, so let's use Q for our coordinate uh, rather than X, because it's slightly more conventional. Uh, when we're dealing with, with uh, Lagrangian mechanics. And what this says is, you, so the integral 
is like a sum because, of course, Q now is just a real variable. So just think in one dimension, Q is just a coordinate along a line. So an integral is just summing over all possible Qs of, of this here. Now, if you want to see why, uh, okay, how many people are familiar with, with that statement? Uh, not, not everyone. Okay, good. Uh, that's fine. So, okay, so Q here is, is a state then of a particle at definite position Q. Okay, so what we do is if you have... And then our product, so one at position Q and one at position Q prime, then you know that states then which are eigenstates with different eigenvalues are orthogonal to each other. So is that, is that a familiar statement to most people? Yeah? Okay, so this, this would be zero unless Q is equal to Q prime. Okay, now if Q is equal to Q prime, then it's not zero, and it's actually a delta function. So... Okay, so if we have a discrete discrete version, if these are just something over integers, then this could be zero if m and n are different, because this is, say, for example, just think of the harmonic oscillator. You know you've got energy eigenstates, and the energies are labeled by some integer in quantum mechanics. Now, if, if these are different energy eigenstates, then they're orthogonal to each other, or there's no overlap between them, and so you get zero. But if they're the same, then that's just how you, you normalize the state. And so you can normalize it so you get one. So this is just the Kronecker delta, which gives you one here. Now, how many people are familiar with this, other, this delta function? Is that, how many people are not familiar with that? Okay, one or two. Okay, so the idea here the property is essentially the sum over n delta m n. If I have some vector with components labeled by n, for example, the sum over all n, then obviously this thing is equal to zero unless m equals n. And so if I sum over all values of n, I'm always getting zero, except for the special case when n is equal to m, where this is one, and that's Fm. So this is what we get there. Now this is just different. What you should think here is when you have a continuous variable, this Kronecker delta gets replaced by this delta function, and summations get replaced by integrals. So it's almost exactly the same thing. The property here is that an integral over all values of Q, for example, Now, when you integrate that, when Q is not equal to Q prime, this just vanishes, and so you don't get anything from your integral. And then you, the only place you get something is when Q is equal to Q prime. And, okay, it's hard to picture this, but you should picture this as some sort of function which is just a, it's zero everywhere, except when Q is equal to Q prime, it's a huge spike. But it's normalized in such a way that integral over that spike is one. So it's a, Basically, you kind of think of it as some function like that, and then you, you make that spike sharper and sharper by keeping the area under the graph equal to 1. So that gives you the delta function. So when you integrate that, the property here is this is just psi of Q prime. Okay, so that's an important point. So that's the property of this delta function, and the point is these the center product or the overlap of these states then is they're orthogonal unless Q is equal to Q prime, and, but you can't normalize them so you get this uh, delta function like that. Okay, so what we're wanting to do, now we can do it, is show that why the identity operator there, 